we did data access from uh, NFS, CFS and IIS case protocol. Now the only protocol which is left out and which gives facility to the clients from then on tap is S3. So in order to perform the S3 operation, how do we perform? First, we have to enable the S3 services on my V server. The way we did for the NFS, SMBA and ISKZ, likewise we'll do for the S3 as well. We'll go, we'll give a one name to the S3 protocol. So can be S3 dot dot net app dot com then we are enabling TLS and the system signed certificate instead of CA because we don't have the software to generate the signature from the CA right now and then we'll use the same interface for SIF and NFS for the uh, for this purpose for S3 protocol the IP is dot 70 and that's all now it will start initiate the services let me try once again S3 dot demo dot com okay it's self signed certificate I'm, I'm using from the box I'm going to use this interface for the communication of the S3 and Certificate was not signed because the expiry date of the signed signature exceeds the expiry date of the CA certificate. Okay, now this time it has been done. We can download this. We, it automatically created this uh, user for us. This is a user for user. This is access key and this is a secret key. And certificate and a certificate which has been generated so we can we have all this information we need to save this file because the access key will be shown only once okay now in this v server has a capability to provide the s3 pro uh, communication and uh, we can create the buckets so uh, we can also cr customize the user access if required uh, we can create a separate separate user for this uh, so next, just to demonstrate uh, I will create a one user name test And here are the keys, access key. And the, this is my secret key. I'll save this. So this users and the username test, they have this access key. This is user test. This has my access key and the secret key in the JSON format. So now in this way we can create a number of users who want to access th this bucket they, who want to access the bucket and uh, finally using that particular user uh, they can control this uh, they can pass the commands like get and put to this particular v file uh, to, for, for the S3 communication. Now 
we'll create a bucket for the user and bucket name is s3 test and I'm going to host on XPFS name should contain the lower case okay so I'm actually I'll use the capital S because of that it's giving me an error and I'm creating a bucket of 2 GB it is giving me an option at least get 95 so I'll proceed with 95 GB and here we can we can add the user the one which you uh, uh, which we created right now the test user this is a test user who is going to have access and it is not only list we can get a categorize like what all operation this uh, user can do likewise for multiple users we can give a multiple options what the that particular person can perform the operation and that's all it just created our s3 bucket with the permission for the s3 bucket has been added and this is a s3 bucket which has been created for our communication okay so uh, when previously when i was trying to add it was giving me a error stating like there was a none no no none of the suitable candidate to add the capacity so i thought earlier like it might be some problem with the gui and then i skipped and tried from cli and later from here it has been they gave a proper reason that there was no space so early what it happened I created a aggregate and the aggregate which I created it was of only six disk and later I added 10 more disks so total is 50 GB and after that I tried adding the space after that again i retried and it was done successfully that was a concern because in lab we have a small disk of 4 gig and it, what it was expecting it was was not getting a that much volume so what it does like when as we uh, this s3 bucket becomes they create some particular policy this particular group in uh, v server and there was not enough space to create and that was a challenge and it has been done successfully now i can confirm from the bucket here here i can later go and edit and i can add the user the permission which i was uh, for the user test which i have created and i'll give a access to get to put the object to get the bucket acl to delete the bucket to get the object acl list multiple multi-part uploads multi-part and tagging and delete object tag so 
I gave all the permission to this particular test user. And now this user has all the permission to perform this operation. So now with the my CLI, I'm going to push some data to the user. So I move to the directory. downloads senior downloads AWS software is there I'm using that AWS software We'll do the configuration. We'll give the access key format as user. This is my access key. This is my secret access key. Region, I'm not going to define anything. Output format, I'm not going to define. So I have done the configuration. Now let me perform the as three calls we I will push some data oh. I just rename the put a installer to put in and now we'll copy the put in the bucket name the bucket name was S3 test S3 test I'm going to copy my putty.exe putty dot exe to s3 bucket and I'm going to use point I remember I created for the 70 if someone has to confirm they can go over there here on which port I have the S3 S3 has been enabled over here this is on dot 70 so I'll give my 70 and 
no verify SSL. This command you can get from the as AWS website. Put it dot exe. Ah, put it dot msa. Put it dot msa. So using this command I can copy to my S3 this has been uploaded just to confirm that it has been done successfully I'll instead of copy I'll just mention list it will go verify whether it has been uploaded successfully or not and if I have to download from there same copy command instead of the copying this i can type like put a put it with the double y dot msi So this is how we can do upload and download. Yeah, actually the problem is I'm not I wasn't giving the file name. This was the problem. So It has been downloaded successfully. Put it dot Okay, thank you.